Hi everyone, my name is Meir Zevi. Uh, my email is meir.zevi at nyu.edu. My research paper for the operating system class is SCADA. A SCADA system is meant for supervisory control and data acquisition. Uh, supervisory control and data acquisition uh, it usually helps big organizations uh, that are responsible for a big territory to control and monitor uh, different devices. So for example, it helps to the electric company to control distribution lines, grid, substations, and that's how um, it can tell if there is a malfunction a hundred, a hundred of miles away and if we should allocate more power to a different distribution lines. Uh, it can give us a lot of insight into a specific system and it can be very critical because we can send control traffic into it. So I just gave you a reason why it's very important for cybersecurity. Okay, so the regular design of the SCADA system is, here we can see a cooperate LAN, local area network. Here we can see from the local area network, we can see a different communication channels. So here we can see a satellite, here we can see a cellular radio, uh, there are still organizations that use the DL app uh, modem. Um, we can use internet, we can use a Sonic network, T1 network, um, ring networks, we can use a serial communication. Name it, they have it. Each organization have different implementation. Uh, after the communication channel, uh, we can see the connection. It goes to an RTU, remote terminal unit. The remote Example, we can see a, a pressure um, it I believe uh, monitors the pressure for a, a water organization uh, another one for flow rate another one for level and another one for temperature so the arrow is bio bidirectional because it's monitor and control so for example, we can say, okay, because the mon because we are we are monitoring the temperature here and the temperature is let's say too high, so maybe dealing with it we can uh, lower the level in the container or maybe lower the pressure in the tubes over here. Uh, oh, by the way, RTU also one of its functionalities because it's data acquisition, so it's basically sample and analog uh, device. So, so it sent an analog signals. Uh, here there is um, A to D, so analog, analog to digital converter, and then it sends it back on this network. Uh, so controlling and monitoring indu industrial processes like water treatment, power generation, fabrication, gas pipelines, electric power transmission and distribution and more. Okay, so SCADA and cybersecurity. You guys already got a small test why SCADA and cybersecurity must go together. So a very small background, SCADA was designed originally for high availability, redundancy, so most of the system today are very stable and loyal. But 
because it was designed decades ago, there was no cybersecurity in mind. Um, so, cybersecurity. Imagine a malicious actor that can access, control, and monitor an industrial process that affect millions of people. For example, let's continue, power grid. So for monitoring, malicious actor will be able to collect data about regional electric usage and individual usage, collect information about key devices and their location for future tie-breaking military operation. Just think about it. Uh, oh, by the way, not only for tie-breaking military operations, it's also for uh, information that maybe can affect uh, the market uh, gain some economic economical uh, benefit uh, controlling obviously controlling we can go uh, very far uh, the worst scenario that I can see is shut down the electricity for millions of people shut down the electricity and then there are a lot of different scenarios what can happen Okay, so motivated examples. Now, I posted here uh, three different and great examples. One, two, three. Uh, I can say each one is very interesting. You can go read it in your free time. Uh, a few, few things. A very interesting part on on the second one there were hackers that basically already hacked if you guys remember the 2017 oil pump explosion in Saudi Arabia this group um, this group of ha of hackers uh, caused caused it and by the second article, it means that they were seconds away or maybe a few finger uh, clicks or prints away from doing a very great damage to the reputation and maybe in damage in life to USA citizens. But this is the first case that we know uh, that uh, was a serious uh, threat to US power grid control. And also there are like so many other examples, just, just Google it. There are like hundreds of articles of articles um, also in addition I didn't mention it but uh, in Ukraine 2015 and 2016 there were two attacks on on the power grid and uh, Russia attacked Ukraine and caused a uh, two major electric outage uh, in Ukraine in in 2015 and 2016 Okay, so before I dive in into details, I just want to say something very quick. In this presentation, I, I am not going to, to, to dive in too much. I'm going to give a high level perspective for best practice. What is the, what I think are the be our best practice to design and and develop and and take into consideration when you develop and design the SCADA system. 
Uh, so in this presentation, we will develop a best practice designed to a SCADA system using IoT devices. Of course, we're going to use IoT devices. We don't want uh, intellectual property from any other company. Now, why don't we want intellectual property? First, it's very expensive. And if we want to order a new device, it takes a long time. We can't really spin up new devices and, and, and do whatever we want. Every small adjustment will cost us a lot of money. It will take a long time. And maybe the vendor will not support in our adjustment, in our change. There, it will be much easier to use a open source and IoT chip device that we can have some TCP IP layer with a, with a, with encryption on top. Uh, also, by the way, open source will be uh, very nice to use, especially because it will be reviewed by a lot of different uh, people from the open source community. As we know, there were uh, a lot of cases that uh, companies have their intellectual property uh, protocols and uh, big organizations took over and, um, and intercepted this communication for years without no one uh, knowing. Known, one known case is Cisco VPN that the NSA could intercept. Now let's move back to our CKD network. So this presentation will cover high availability, redundancy, management, maintenance, encryption, purpose built operating system, accountability, state of operating system, firewalls, and IDS IPS. Okay, uh, availability and redundancy. Um, okay, so here each icon like this is an industrial process, and and each industrial process, each group will be connected to one IoT device. So. For redundancy purposes, we will have two IoT devices for each group of industrial processes. And the traffic, of course, will go to the CNI network, critical network infrastructure network. Um, now, in case that we have a problem with our uh, circuit, then the critical network infrastructure network doesn't work. It will fail over to other IoT devices which have the same architecture of, uh, of N minus one. Please pay attention using cooperate, uh, cooperate network for any case is not recommended. And I don't know companies that do that, but from the sources, that from the resources that I attached in the motivated examples, it, there are companies that merge some of the corporate network with the CNI network. Um, obviously that for N minus two, we can use a different solution. For example, using a 4G or 5G and then take it directly to, to the cloud or uh, some some other servers in a DR location that the company has. But again, not using corporate network for the things we need to separate between the CNI network and the corporate network. <coughs> okay, so our second thing will be management, maintenance, and encryption. So uh, create secure channel to manage and maintain SCADA devices. IPsec VPN for one connection is recommended. If using SSL TLS, make sure HTTP strict transport security HSTS is cached. 
to avoid SSL strip or any other man in the middle attack. Now, why am I saying management maintenance? Because as we said, SCADA system is distributed and sometimes uh, one device will be miles away from the closest technician. In this case, we want uh, the possibility to connect, manage and maintain this divide in an encrypted way. And guys, be surprised, but there is not a lot of encryption today or maybe no encryption in SCADA systems. Uh, the, the next thing that we will touch will be limited purpose built operating system. So the main thing that I'm taking that we're taking a look and this is in this figure will be a whitelisting. So a new process creation, process creation flow in operating system. So step one, the process creation is intercepted here and then it will be sent to a scanner module it searches in database for requested file we will go to the to the database and then uh, we will go back to the cpu and we will uh, receive the response so in case of this process is allowed we will continue in case of this process is not allowed <coughs> sorry we will uh, return failure to the os um now basically the uh, no need to have a general purpose fully featured operating system therefore a purpose-built operating system with a process whitelisting designed for SCADA device will lower the need for compute power security patches and maintaining applications that are not relevant to the functionality of the SCADA network also don't forget a uh, SCADA SCADA device is a uh, plan to work ears in the field hundreds of miles from anything close to a uh, sometimes like an engineer and we want a way to make sure that we, there are no processes processes that we are not planning to run on an operating system uh, accountability so of course if someone sent a control or monitoring uh, traffic we want to capture it without a uh, apt advanced persistent uh, thread changing our logs and uh, so we won't be able to discover uh, that it compromised our device so using blockchain for accountability means no more secret advanced persistent thread will not be able to modify operating system logs or application logs to show that the operating system or an application works as planned so for this blockchain will be a solution uh, state of operating system the longer the state of an operating system is maintained the longer the risk of a manipulation change or attack on that state increases therefore an operating system that regularly changes its state and resetting itself will decrease these risks so imagine that we have a, a lot of devices over there on the field and we can we have an image of them and we will be able to clear a device spin up a new device based on a known uh, image that we can use <coughs> we basically it, it means that we will change the state of the operating system all the time and we'll be able to prevent a uh, uh, different actors to compromise our operating system uh, firewall ids and ips so i'm adding it because obviously that uh, wherever there is iot device 
that belongs to the SCADA network, there should be a firewall, IDS and IPS. But I'm just saying it because most of the organizations today don't know how to use the tools correctly and it's a shame. So the organization owns the devices connected to the SCADA network should take an, an active approach. Each device should be beyond the firewall with an active IDS, IPS monitoring for malicious uh, traffic signatures. Uh, conclusions, this document describes general guidelines for the implementation of SCADA system. Main topics that this document covers are high availability, redundancy, management, maintenance, encryption, purpose-built operating system, accountability, state of operating system, firewalls, and IDS, IPS. And future that I like. Uh, the first one, we already spoke about it in the high availability and redundancy slide. Using IoT core service, which belongs to Amazon, um, with 4G, 5G IoT device to create a disaster recovery scanner network. I hope you guys understand it. Hopefully, it sounds cool. I will have. I will be happy to hear some feedback about it. And uh, using machine learning to monitor and control scanner system. So we can go to a proof of concept. Of course, first we want you let it control, but we can use it for monitoring. Uh, instead of using some very expensive intellectual property of main companies today, of main vendors, we will be able to uh, control it ourselves and adjust it the way we want. Uh, also, using voice service, Alexa and Google, I took it for example because that's what I'm familiar with, to monitor and control SCADA system. Again, monitor and control. Control is like very strong word, so I'm not sure about that, but we can go into proof of concept and maybe add some biometric um, control system into this system that, we, that I'm talking about. So this is for future research. I will be able to, I will be happy to maybe implement one of them in the future it sounds uh, something that can actually work very well so if you have any questions please feel free to contact me uh, my email is meir.zevi at nyu.edu i'm very happy that you guys gave me your time i appreciate your time i hope i gave you some some knowledge i hope you have you are you come out more non knowledgeable about the scatter system the concerns with cyber security thank you thank you very much